Welcome. Today we talk about the new Active V3 transponder series. What features do we have on board? Why do we at all have a new transponder generation now? And what are the differences between the three, let's say four transponder variants? And who could answer those questions better than our CTO Nikias Klor? Nikias, welcome. Hello. The feedback we received on the V2 transponders during the last years were quite good. Why do we now still have an updated or let's say a new transponder generation? Yeah, you're right. So the V2 transponder is actually pretty good and used worldwide for all kinds of events and we were quite happy with it. And if you had asked me two or three years ago, I would still be producing V2s. Unfortunately, due to all the parts crisis that maybe some of you guys heard from, um, we had to do a redesign of the transponder. And we used that as a chance to improve the transponder. Um, and basically, the old transponder we couldn't produce anymore because of missing parts. There are a whole lot of new improvements who maybe already read about it, knows it. Compared to the V2 version, could you maybe tell us about the most important new features that actually every timer will realize or will like? Yeah, so um, first of all, one needs to understand that the internals of the transponders are completely new. Yeah? So it's a completely new microprocessor used in the transponder. And this gave us some... I would say benefits of modern microcontroller technology. Um, you have to know that the V2 transponder was still based on a microcontroller from 10 years ago. And um, this especially helps us with power consumption when the transponder is doing something. And um, for that, we have a hugely improved low temperature performance. And I think this is uh, something that many people will like. Um, because of the new technology used, um, the transponder just needs a lot less energy when it transmits the passing. And especially in low temperature, when the battery is already low, this makes a huge difference. Um, a second difference is that the precision and accuracy of the transponder has um, been significantly improved. Um, this is parts due to the new technology, but also parts due to things that we learned in the last 10 years that we could put into the new transponder. Before we had three transponder versions, now we actually have four, the basic, the pro, the pro performance, and the car transponder, the performance is new. Why did you add this one to the portfolio? Yeah, so um, one of the design decisions that we had to make was that um, most of our customers need a everyday transponder. Uh, so I would say 90% or 95% of the applications. Um, you have low to mid-profile events with a um, significant number of participants and you want to have a transponder which has good battery life and gives you good overall performance. And that's the pro. That's still the pro and it's been before but there are some um, events high performance events live TV events where you will need additional performance and you don't care that much for the battery life and it was very difficult in the old in the v2 transponder to find a good compromise between those two goals so we decided now that we don't do a compromise here we have the pro which is good for most of the events and we have the pro performance, which is good for a very small fraction of events and maybe even only the elite um, participants on those events um, with maximum performance um, regardless of battery life. And now we have still also, of course, the car transponder and the basic transponder, which I would say more or less was a niche product before. Why do you think this might change with the V3 version? Yeah, so um, if you look at the internals, um, we could make a new uh, overall transponder with the BASIC because of the new technology that we use inside. Um, and basically what we now did is we improved the um, product um, and we were able to lower the price, especially at high volumes. Um, but the transponder doesn't have the battery life anymore as it had before. And what we're aiming at here is a certain market of events where you have a high loss rate of transponders. There are some events out there where active transponders are used, where we have the problem that the loss rate, so people losing the transponder, not giving them back after the event is very high. And in those cases, you want the transponder um, to be priced as attractively as possible, and you don't care for seven years battery life. Um, and that's why we changed the setup of the basic. It now has a 2D antenna, making it usable for most events. 
and um, it um, basically performs good enough for all the high volume, high participants count events where you have high loss rates. And important to mention, you can mix those transponder populations in one race. So basically one scenario would be to have the age groupers with a blue transponder and the elite with a pro Of course, of course, yes. You can mix all the different V3 transponders and you can also mix them with V2 and V1. Uh, so you can use all transponders with all our hardware. The V3 transponder is 100% compatible to even the very earliest um, active equipment that we sold. Thanks, Nick Lias. If you're interested in more insights into the new V3 transponder, check out our next video here at YouTube. Thank you, Nick Lias, and uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.